I modded Halo Reach so every single enemy is an Ultra Elite. Then, I gave them an equal chance of either having a Focus Rifle for Long Range, a Concussion Rifle for Medium Range, or an Energy Sword for Close Up. If you've seen my other challenges, you may be surprised to hear that this is by far the hardest one I've attempted yet. So, let's get into it, shall we? To start off, I say hi to the local wildlife on the way to the first encounter. Then, when I get outside, I just try running by everything and hope that'll work, but obviously it doesn't. So, I just crouch in a corner and see if I can find a better time to run out. After a while, I hear it's quieter, and I notice that Noble Team is going to actually be very useful in this challenge, as they killed off every single one of them for me. It's a good thing that they'll be with me the entire game, right? Anyway, moving on ahead, and we see a good example of how annoying the focus rifles are going to be, but with all of them distracted by Noble Team, I'm able to get past and into the truck. I get out at the first building that's marked, and start by immediately running away again to hopefully let Carter and George take care of everything. Here is where I learn that an Ultra Elite on Legendary doesn't die to just one sword swing, which is wonderful. I thought that the sword would be a consistent strategy, but I guess not. Also, by the way, this is my first time beating Halo Reach on Legendary. If I'm being honest, I just don't like the gameplay in the Halo Reach campaign, so I never wanted to struggle through a playthrough. Anyway, I get this incredible checkpoint here. Thank you, Halo. Really useful. And then here is where I learn that this game also has the system that reverts you back to an earlier checkpoint if you die enough. Thank God. After dying again, I remember that this building actually isn't necessary to beat the level, and I just drive by. I get to the next building, which is required, and I just drop off Carter and George to actually do the fighting again, while I try to bowl a strike with the truck. The elites do look like bowling pins, right? I thought that splattering would be a consistent strategy, but look at what even a couple of focus rifles can do to you while you're in a vehicle. After a life where I get a couple of lucky loops and splatters, there's only a few left. I try and steal Carter's kill, but he clutches the double. I'm actually 100% still confused as to why the dropship with more guys never came in, but I don't complain when the Falcon comes down. Now, I was worried about dying immediately in this next section, but I get out on the opposite side of the Falcon and manage to run into the room here. Again, I just let my teammates clean up. I'll take what I can get. There is going to be some awful stuff later. I'm actually very surprised that it only took me 20 minutes to get to this last section here, but I'm not surprised at all that it took me four hours to clean these last two rooms up. So in here, I only have George with me, and I have about half a dozen elites to kill. Luckily, I have the perfect strategy, the forklift. After a while, everybody gets scared of the forklift and runs away down the hall, and I see a terrifying sight when I peek down it. How the hell am I supposed to make progress down this hall? Well, I mean, I already told you, it's the forklift. I push this pallet of barrels so it blocks the halls, and can slowly push my way down. George runs in, and I think he's gonna stay and fight, which is great, but he uses his invincibility to just run into the next room, like an asshole. The forklift actually doesn't help much either at this point. Let's take a moment and take stock of the situation we're in. I have to kill what looks like around 10 Ultra Elites in a hallway when all I have is human weaponry. What would you do in this situation? Seriously, I mean it. Think about how impossible this situation already looks, and we're only in the first level. Well, it turns out you can just run by them if they're distracted enough, but even that isn't foolproof once you get inside. 20 minutes into this hallway ordeal, and I kill the first elite of this section. Nice. Now to just get the other nine. Here is where I learned that a sticky grenade doesn't even fully take out the shields of an Ultra Elite on Legendary. He takes one sticky and a full mag of AR ammo. 
There goes another one of my strategies. I was hoping that Stookies would be consistent. I do somehow end up taking down most of them, but the rest retreat into the next room. Oh boy, the next room. I get a checkpoint and think, I'm almost done, only one more room. Again, think about the situation I am in. I have access to my DMR ammo I have on hand, a wall with some AR ammo, one shotgun down here, and a drop shield equipment. I can get some weapons from the elites, but that requires killing them in a spot where I can reach without dying. It also doesn't help that George hates getting his hands dirty, and will do everything he can to just stay up on this section of the room. You can see here that a full, uninterrupted burst from a focus rifle can take the shield down, and then one DMR to the dome takes them out. I can also sneak a kill on one if they get aggro and move up here. Now, my forklift may be gone, but I can be my own forklift. I start using these small boxes to give myself cover while approaching the door. I try and see if I can hit the button, but no. In order to hit it, I need to kill whichever five of these dozen or so elites have replaced a zealot and four specific grunts. I have no way to tell who is who, though. So, I just have to kill them all. I pick up the shotgun once and learn that it takes three shots to kill one of these guys. I never pick up another shotgun again. George finally gets forced down once, but just runs back immediately. Here, I finally get my first actually good strategy. I can push a box to get right next to this door, drop shield, and pick one off with sword and DMR. This clip here shows off how frantic even this strategy is, but it's the best I have. I've yapped enough about this room though, so let's gloss over the fact that I restarted the entire level just so I could kill the initial group that run down the hall, just so I can get a checkpoint in here with maybe 8 elites to kill instead of 16. It works, and then I pick them off one by one, and after 4 hours of actual torture, I get out of this room. I've been stuck in single rooms on challenges for over six hours, but this was by far the least fun I've ever had in a challenge. I hate the Elite AI in Reach. They dodge everything, they stay at range, they have way too much health, it's just impossible to have a consistent strategy. Let's move on to the second level though. It's gotta be easier, right? Well, it starts off with you needing to kill every elite between you and the orbital strike targeter thing. Great. As you can see here, I can barely 1v1 one of these guys, let alone 12v1. Cat can hold her own though. I hope that I can just hang back for like 15 minutes and eventually she'll clear them out. But I realize a couple of things about the Noble Team AI here. One, they cannot kill any elites at range, so if a focus rifle elite decides to hang back, they just won't kill them with the bursts they do every few seconds. Second, they really only take down whichever ones have swords, or ones that just decide to go for melee spam on them. Third, I learned that most of the time, the Noble Team AI will only go up as far as you have gone in the level. So, she initially stays behind these crates and stuff, but will move on to the bridge when I do. So, we can very slowly move up, and the elites with range will fall back. Together, we can pick off maybe half a dozen of them or so while Cat's up this far. I have one life where I get a bunch of them, I survive for 10 or 15 minutes, and then get killed and get sent right back to the start. So, I need to play this extra carefully. If you think I can just DMR them down from range, if you hit every one of your DMR shots, including the final headshot, you can take down one elite with exactly one bullet left in your mag. So, when the elites are extra good at finding cover immediately when you try and shoot them, it's very difficult to get a long or medium range kill off. And if I could do it consistently, I could maybe get only four or five of them down with the full amount of DMR ammo I have, which is not enough. I get one good attempt where we clear maybe ten of them, and I start freaking out. It took me an hour of attempts to get this solid one, and I still have no checkpoint. I'm stressing out so much, I somehow think this cart is going to be able to help me. 
but I think better before one concussion rifle bullet kills me, like it would in the forklift. I do finally build up the courage on this attempt to crouch down this section here and move forward, and Kat thankfully moves up too. Now that she's up there, I can help her from afar to take down the next group. We do so, and after about 20 minutes without dying, I finally get a checkpoint. The next group isn't that bad, and we clear it easily in a few minutes. We finally have the ordinance now. I take out the two wraiths and wait for the warthog to come get delivered. It turns out that it doesn't come until I kill all of the elites, and these four guys are standing in the open, all with focus rifles. I have no easy way to kill them. I try to bait Cat forward, but she doesn't budge. No angle really works, and peeking guys with focus rifles rarely works when they're already aggro. So, I just run off on foot. I can totally clear these two sections on foot. No way I'll want to die the entire time. I go this way, and I find a ghost and two elites, and even that is too much for me. I cannot board the ghost and survive. So, I turn around and go the other way. Again, warthogless. I get to the next section, and Cat starts taking down all of the sword guys like usual. And I, with a stroke of genius, decide to head back towards where the warthog would be dropped off. The enemies are despawned now, but no pelican comes. Thankfully, I do get a checkpoint a 90 second walk away from the battle, which is extremely fun. Did I mention I'm having a lot of fun with this challenge? I do actually get another checkpoint right before I grab this sniper, so it's okay. Here is where I learn that it takes three sniper shots, with the final one needing to be a headshot to kill an Ultra Elite on Legendary. God, I hate these guys. Nothing kills them. I clear enough of them and freak out after I see this dropship that probably has eight more of them. Two ghosts also join, but I do get another checkpoint. After hitting the button that I need to for the objective, I'm able to just run away if I really want, but I need the Warthog that you get for clearing this whole section of enemies. It actually isn't that bad. I slowly take them out one by one, and once they're all clear, I finally get my Hog. One way to the next objective has two ghosts and a dropship, while the other one has one ghost and two guys. I take the easier route. And now for this wonderful area. I go in, have no idea what I'm doing, and immediately abandon my squad mates like a good soldier does. Now, my warthog is either destroyed, or just in the middle of everything with no cover. And I got a checkpoint. Nice. Great work, Noble Six. This building does have some rockets, so I can take down the Revenant and then waste two shots because these assholes always just dodge them. I notice the hog is somehow still alive, so I go on a rescue mission. I somehow save it on my first try, and then mess up real bad and die. I don't get it out again for the next 20 attempts. After 30 more minutes of beating my head against this wall, I remember that I can force myself to revert back a checkpoint. So I throw stickies at my feet until I get my warthog back. I get a successful attempt across to the other side where I get a checkpoint. Now I'm close to where the first switch is, and I start attempting to get in there and survive. On my second attempt, this happens, and I get a little bit of hope that just running in and winging it will work. Turns out it does, and that it's easy. A few more attempts later, I get across to the other building and complete the objective. I grab the rocket ammo and head off without the Warthog. It would be nearly impossible to get it back anyway. I think it'll be a clear walk back to where I have to go, but a Phantom drops off a Revenant and a couple more Elites. So I revert to just being a two-year-old, and think that if I can't see them, they can't see me. It turns out that's actually true, I guess, and I sneak enough to let the two elites go away, and now I only just need to board the Revenant and run to the Switch to head back towards Oni HQ. Now, remember the area that took me an hour? Well, let's do that exact same thing again, but Cat doesn't move up at all, they have the high ground, and I have no sneaky way to get by. Ooh boy, here we go again. Now, I always had a feeling that I could beat the last room in the previous mission, but this is the first time I get an inkling of this might be too hard. 
I flounder for a while. I try armor lock for some reason. I try bringing the revenant in. I try running by on the right. I try running by on the left. I try just waiting and hoping Cat magically gets them all after half an hour. Nothing works. Until I get this one attempt sneaking by that actually looks promising. Another 10 or 15 minutes of attempting that, and I finally sneak by with as little HP as I could have survived with. And now that I got up here, Cat finally moves up to where I am and can take them out slowly. I get a pretty good checkpoint here, and then I get into the elevator. Now, for the part of the level I was actually for some reason the most worried about, I think that it'll be hard to sneak by anything in here, but there's enough cover to do some cheese and pick off the first group one by one with the sword. Then I forget why I was ever worried in the first place because I got three other members of Noble Team here with me. We clean up the first few groups easily and then I sneak by these guys by hopping around the outside here. I make my way to the top and clear out the Banshees to beat level number two. The third level is usually really easy because you can just walk by nearly every encounter. Unless a third of them are ultra elites with focus rifles and kill you immediately. Now, I do sneak past the first area after a few attempts, and after much more than a few, I get past the next group too. Not too bad so far. In the next section, I can just abandon the civilians, as a good Spartan does, and make it to the next section that I am not able to run by. Now, there happen to be a lot of sword guys that June can kill, thankfully. And I have enough sniper ammo to take out a dozen or so elites across the gap here. We kill enough of them to start the defense segment where some phantoms drop off more elites. One of which is really good with the concussion rifle. But I'm able to use the area we're in to my advantage and pick all of them off with my sword slowly. Now all I have to do to beat the level is run by all of these guys. This time though, it's not so easy. There are three shade turrets that will melt me instantly, and there are a ton of focus rifle guys that are all already aggroed on us, unlike the first couple sections where I can stealth by. The only actually interesting thing that happened here was this guy who spawned without a weapon, thinking he can just intimidate me to death. June and I slowly move up, killing any of them when we have the opportunity. Like how three of them will just hop in the shade for me to get cheeky kills on, Otherwise, we just slowly work our way up and finish the level. Nothing too exciting. This level was pretty easy compared to the other two. Now for what I expected before the challenge to be the first real trouble level. Tip of the Spear. I start off by running along the left side, near the cliff. The pelican shows up with the rocket hog I want, but it will not land until I clear out all of these guys, which I am not doing. There isn't enough cover, and I don't have a reliable amount of ammo to kill them all. So, I run by and just grab this ghost, just past the first AA gun instead. Now, did you know that you can kill the AA guns in this level by just spamming them with bullets? The dialogue says you can't, but you can. So, I do that. In this next section, everyone is either distracted, across the bridge, or has moved up onto these stairs. So I can just do this cute little skip to bypass all of the encounters in this area. Great. Now I bring this ghost to the next AA gun and take it down. Finally, for the actually tough part. There are a ton of elites that will only stand in this one spot, and will melt me immediately if I try and attack them in any way. Look at all of them. I decide the only way I can get a foothold here is by going bowling. Nice throw! And it turns out that the Falcon can land before everything is dead if you've killed enough of them, or the right ones, I'm not sure. And that sounds great, until you see this attempt where I try to get in, and then I tell you that they can kill or board the Falcon and it will softlock you. 
So it's actually good that I didn't get a checkpoint here when the Falcon landed, but I went back to none of them being dead. Apparently, that first bowling run was extra lucky, because it took me a lot more attempts to get one where I did it, but didn't kill enough of them or the right ones to trigger the Falcon coming down. I got this run and immediately get a checkpoint, but my ghost is destroyed enough that I can't do another head-on run without dying. Trust me, I tried for a long time. I tried to splatter them with the truck, but look at this. Without the boost from a ghost or something similar, I cannot even touch these guys because they'll just repel me with their focus rifle and concussion rifle shots. So, I drive my ghost up this wall to see if I can do anything up here near the AA gun, and I end up getting another checkpoint. Now, I can't do anything yet with this, but I do know how to force a checkpoint when I want one. So, I die a few times quickly to revert back to my old checkpoint. And now, with a more solid plan. My plan is, get the Falcon down, and then go up there to get a checkpoint, and then try and get in the Falcon a million times until it works. What I end up doing is taking the truck to do this, and then slowly pick them off as they hop around being the most annoying enemy I've ever faced in any game ever. Eventually, there's only four of them down there, and I am pretty sure I can attempt some splatters, but I don't want to spend five minutes killing four of them with the DMR each time so I decide to just get my backup checkpoint here while there's only four of them alive. Now look at this. I clean up the couple stragglers that were near the AA gun, and I finally get aboard the Falcon. Getting into the Spire takes a few attempts of driving, but I finally get up, and I actually clear the top on my first attempt even with the fact that I purposefully left these two guys with fuel rods just to piss myself off even more. Anyway, on to the next level. The beginning of this level, I finally have a lot of help again from Noble Team, and I breeze my way through to the space section. Now, the space section is no different from normal Legendary, so I definitely didn't skip it because it sucks. Nope. Not at all. Anyway, after restarting at Rally Point Charlie to skip it, I'm in this section. And now is where I finally stop leading you guys on. You've probably noticed the length of the video by now, and may be thinking, wow, he must beat the last four and a half levels really quickly. Nope. That's not it at all. Look at this room. I have no cover. They all stand in the middle and don't move. I can barely even get up these ramps without dying. I cannot make it to the other side, even if there was anything over there that could help me. And before entering this room, there is a long, straight hallway that I cannot hide in to pick anyone off. And just to piss myself off even more, if there was any elite with a jetpack, I kept them with the jetpack. So I can't hide anywhere in this room either, because the few with jetpacks will leave the middle to come up and kill me. I need to kill every elite in this room to move on. There is no other way to put it, this room is impossible. I mean that genuinely. If someone can beat this room and the subsequent fights after it to beat this level with this mod on, playing solo, I will forever be in awe of you. I was going to download a co-op split-screen mod for PC and use infinite spawns to just cheese my way past these encounters, but I felt that would be cheap, and before I did that, I went to the next level. Which I could get all the way up until this room here, which took me five hours, where I have a similar issue. I just can't do it. I can't kill them all. I even thought maybe I could do split-screen cheese here too, and then I went to the next section, and it's even harder. This challenge broke me, everyone. Even to beat these four and a half levels, I was at a longer playtime than my Hunter run and my Rocket Flood run. And, to put the cherry on top, I was not having fun the entire time. And it sounds crazy, but all of my other runs, I was having a blast. And usually, if I'm not having fun, it translates into the video. So, I decided to pack it up 
and call it a failure. Do you want to know what isn't a failure, though? My next two runs. Hopefully. Well, I know if they're failures or not, but you don't, until I put the videos out. Those two videos should be coming out within the next month or so. Yes, that's right, I'm back. I'll announce one of the videos right now. The next one is Halo 2 on Legendary, but everything is the final boss, Tartarus. So, subscribe if you want to see that video, the few live streams I should be scheduling shortly, and the mystery third video should be coming out after the Halo 2 one. Thank you everybody for watching this one, and I hope you have a fantastic day.